Hello everybody. This is a video on the intelligent plasma ball, nicknamed the intelligent. And I would like to suggest before you go any further and watch this video, in watching this video, is that you download the PDF off the www.auroraSky.website, which is um, also listed in the video uh, caption, so you'll have the address there. And use it as a uh, follow through or a um, come along with respect to what I say and what is presented in the uh, opening quick start um, help clarify one another. So the reason why I have the camera so close is because that's only a one inch um, liquid crystal display and the camera is very finicky and hard to focus and you can't even read the display if I put the camera any farther away. I have a very basic video scheme here. Um, I use Mint um, with a uh, very simple uh, camera and I'm using what they call the cheese package which uh, is a standard uh, image capture package. Not very sophisticated but it works. I've done all my videos this way and I'm going to see if we can get through this one the same way. So I'm going to start and stop occasionally um, just so I can get my act together on where I'm at in this presentation. But the first thing I want to do is to show you the plasma ball a little bit, a little bit better close up. Looks very familiar, should look very familiar. There's a toggle switch down here now versus a um, slider switch. Uh, there's a whole new board in here. Um, the board ha also has its mass posted on the website and the schematic so you can see the uh, board. You can duplicate the board. You can do whatever you want uh, with it because it's all open source. But this part of the plasma ball looks identical to the six inch plasma ball that's already advertised on the uh, website or shown or displayed on the website and it functions the same. When the switches are down it runs on the internal components. When the switches are up it runs on an external source such as a Spooky 2 or any other function generator. This side here consists of a display, a rotary knob, a continuous rotary knob. It's very similar to what's on um, a lot of the function generators and a single push button switch. Additionally, of course, the power goes in here right where my finger is pointing now. So without further ado, we're going to plug in the power and get this baby up and running and I'll have to turn on the switch and the first thing you'll see is coming to life is the screen now here it's just going to be a matter of letting the unit autofocus on the screen and we got it and this is how most of the presentation will be shown um, just so I can get that screen in view the unit as it comes from Aurora Sky has this very same identical screen. Presently it does, it's the same. Um, and I'm going to go over it piece by piece. In the up here, up here in the left hand corner, there is a word called setup equals zero. If you follow uh, on the intelligence uh, plasma ball quick startup sheet, PFD, you'll see that I make it a lot clearer. I actually print the screen out and it says setup equals zero frequency reads equal one. To explain that there are five setup screens. We are on the zero, the first setup screen. Setup screen zero allows you to select one of 50 different memory groups and each memory group contains two frequencies and two um, duty cycles. The two frequencies of course represent channel 1 and channel 2 and they're labeled F1 and F2 and the duty cycles correspond with D2 and or D1 and D2. Alright, um, right now it is set in a simple frequency mode so the upper frequency is 34.922 Hertz or 39.922 kilohertz with a duty cycle of 20%. There is a limitation on the upper frequency duty cycle 
and the software monitors it so you cannot override it it will go from one to I believe no I believe one to 25 percent um, and typical values in there would be 10 15 and 20 you can push it a little harder by going to 25 and when you get down to real low frequencies you need to have very small um, uh, duty cycles literally down in the uh, two and three and four and five percent uh, range more on that possibly in another video we're only going to have time to get one done today and we'll probably break this one single video up into three or four before I'm finished I'm going to explain the, a couple of functions right now and the first thing you'll see is a small underline under the zero on setup equals zero and if I press the red button where my finger is at right now you'll see that cursor jump over to frequency reads equals one and if I press it again it'll snap back to the setup equals zero so that's all this cursor will do it will go back and forth on this screen when it's in when it's under the one in reads I already have 50 channels pre-recorded in the memory here uh, some of them really don't do much but right now we're in channel one or memory position one I call them frequency groups because there's actually two frequencies and two duty cycles allocated to each memory channel so this fre frequency group um, has got the second frequency uh, set to showman's residence 7.83 and with a duty cycle of 50 percent to start the plasma ball right now I know it's in a protocol called or in a mode not a protocol but in a mode of simple frequency so it will run whatever is on the screen when it's in simple mode and if I press the plasma ball and hopefully the camera doesn't get flaked out by the electric field well it doesn't and it's flashing away I'll just back this up a little bit and you can see the plasma ball flashing away see if I can get focus again hopefully it'll find its focus there it goes it's found its focus and so it's in the running screen and with the running screen I'll explain that too and this is a little out of order from the quick start but that's quite all right I'm here this is where I'm going to talk about this is what I'm going to talk about uh, presently it is oh it's changing I have it set up for a different protocol on this particular ball um, I am going to stop this <laughs> and not restart this presentation but to reset and you're gonna I'll come back and explain what I'm doing but I'm going to go back to set up and I'm going to go to screen 2 and I'm going to change the mode to, to simple you can see the cursor just jumped underneath mode 2 I know it's not perfectly clear but I'm going to change that to a 1 now it'll go back and I'm going to hit the setup to zero again voila and now I'm going to run that simple screen frequency I was in protocol I was running a sequence of frequencies and I didn't intend to do that uh, but I switched plasma balls um, and I didn't check to see what the last program or setup I was running in this particular plasma ball okay back where I was last we have a frequency a primary frequency of uh, 34922 uh, by the way that is a Fibonacci series or golden mean ratio derivative um, I'm not going to explain that that's out of uh, that's off topic for right now and it's got a showman's residence Ooh, I'm not in frequency 2 so I'm going to go over uh, frequency 1 and it's got a Schumann's resonance running at 7.83 and um, if I press the button again it's not only flashing but it's running the primary um, when it's on of you want to see it there it is 
Uh, it's flashing to me. The camera can't catch it uh, very well, but it is flashing to me. It's r flashing at 7.83 hertz. This running screen has a T, and that number is being, that number changes, uh, 905. Uh, and it's explained in the PDF and what that number is. It's the temperature of the MOSFET that's driving the plasma. And that's very important because the internal circuitry cannot overdrive the plasma, but an external circuitry running from a spooky, you can certainly overdrive the plasma MOSFET is what I meant to say. Complete sentence would be plasma ball MOSFET. The MOSFET is a power driving um, FET transistor um, that will turn the plasma ball on and off at the selected frequencies. And if you run externally, um, you'll see right now it's about 900, um, and that just represents to the software roughly the ambient temperature. And You'll see it's dropping slowly. It's dropping to 899. And what that's indicating is, is that we're running and the plasma ball is warming up that F, uh, FET, MOSFET, um, warming it up. And it'll probably settle out and stay oscillating, or not stay oscillating, probably stay at a temperature between 8 and 900. When it starts to get lower than 800, um, it's starting to get really warm, and if it gets down to 725, a too hot will display on the screen and shut the plasma ball down. This won't happen from running it uh, with the internal Arduino in the software and the hardware. This, you'll only get that 725, get it too hot, if you use too large a duty cycle and you're running from an external function generator. Okay, um, the, the number, let me see if I can get it to stay. I know I can watch it flickering, going in and out of focus. The number equals one, that means we're running the very first frequency um, that's in the 50 memory database inside the Arduino. And we're running, uh, Number one, when you're running in protocol modes, it'll change. It'll, you'll watch it change from one to two as you increment through the various uh, frequencies because you're running a string of frequencies in what I call protocol mode. And when you're in sweep mode, it will also increment to the number of frequencies that the sweep has figured out it is going to sweep through. Um, and I'll explain that a little bit more a little bit later in this video. I'm going to stop it, go back to the original screen, and we're going to go into more detail on the other five screens within the uh, plasma ball. This is a 13 minute, 25 second video. I'm going to cut it here, and we're going to call this video one, and we will start video two in just a few minutes.